in the previous video we had dealt with the theoretical aspect of oxidation bone likewise we also dealt with the design criteria of the oxidation bone now in this video we will be going through a numerical problem on oxidation bone and we will design an oxidation bone so for this watch the video till the end we are presented a question and it states that design an oxidation bone for treating domestic sewage from a community having thousand number of people with a water supply rate of 200 lpcd the permissible organic loading for the pond is 500 kg per hectare per day and influent bod is 300 mg per liter the bod reduction in the oxidation pond is assumed to be 90 percentage and assume suitable data whenever necessary according to the question we have the number of population for designing an oxidation pond p is given as thousand people and the water supply rate for that community is given as 200 lpcd likewise the influent bod at the inlet point of the oxidation pond uh, is given as 200 uh, sorry 300 uh, milligram per liter and the permissible organic loading for that oxidation pond that to be that is to be designed is 500 kg per hectare per day so this 500 kg per hectare per day is the maximum allowable uh, organic loading that the oxidation pond can uh, have so we are not allowed to exceed this value here we are given as the bod reduction in this oxidation pond will be uh, 90 percentage so we need to find the effluent bod uh, so for finding the effluent bod we need to simply do as uh, as here the inlet bod uh, is 300 mg per liter and 90 percentage is reducing uh, uh, 90 percentage is the bod reduction in this oxidation pond so the effluent bod will be uh, 300 minus 90 percentage of this uh, influent BOD that would uh, that would yield as the value of 30 mg per liter so the effluent BOD uh, will be 30 mg per liter so we need to find the dimension of the pond that is the length the breadth and the overall depth of the pond that is our main tax so we will be doing that now going through step one uh, in step one we will and determine the detention time of the uh, organic loading to settle down the oxidation pond so for determining the detention time all we need uh, is to uh, use a form simple formula here so we can uh, determine the detention time using uh, t equals to 1 by k log base 10 la by lt where this um, k is your deoxygenation constant and la and lt are uh, influent and effluent bod respectively so the value of k uh, is taken as 0 0.10 for our base 10 as uh, in the previous uh, lecture i have uh, told you that uh, for base 10 you have to take the value of deoxygenation constant as 0 0.10 and if you are taking log base e you will take the value as 0 0.23 so uh, when we simply apply this uh, formula this equation we will get the detention time of this <coughs> oxidation point as 10 days this uh, 10 days value is ranging between uh, the our uh, value of the detention time as 10 to 45 days so uh, our uh, detention time is okay now in step 2 is to find the discharge now for finding discharge we are assuming that all water supply is contributing uh, to the wastewater so we are not assuming and there is any losses we are assuming that all water supply is uh, contributing to the CVS flow and uh, we can uh, determine the CVS flow uh, Q as uh, using uh, population number of population and multiplying this number of population with the water supply rate that is given in the uh, design aspect uh, that is here 200 now uh, here we are not assuming any uh, peak flow and uh, we are just uh, assuming that all water is uh, contributing to wastewater and we are not using uh, peak flow as it is our treatment plant so um, uh, here 
the value of population is thousand number of people and the value of discharge is 200 uh, uh, lpcd and solving this we will get uh, uh, 2 into 10 to the power 5 uh, liters per day and converting uh, liters into cubic meter we will get 200 cubic meter per day as you know that uh, 1 cubic meter equals to 1000 liters so converging that we will get 200 cubic meter per day here in step 3 we will find the volume of the oxidation pond V so the volume of the oxidation pond V can be determined by using a simple formula volume V equals to discharge into time here discharge is you has uh, you have already obtained in step number 2 where it is given as 200 cubic meter per day and and the value of t that is your detention time has been obtained in step first yeah, that is 10 day so uh, 200 cube meter per day into 10 day uh, day and day are cut off and you will just get 2000 cube meter as the volume of this oxidation pond in step 4 we will find the surface area of the pond for finding the surface area of the pond first of all we need to know the two parameters the first parameter is your applied BOD W the value of applied BOD W can be determined by using formula uh, W equals to discharge multiplied by influent BOD that is LA so here in this case the value of discharge is 2 into 10 to the power 10 to the power 5 liters per day multiplied with uh, the value of influent BOD as 300 uh, milligram per liter so solving this we will receive uh, the value of w as 60 kg per day likewise the second parameter for determining the surface area of the pond is your uh, organic loading u so the uh, so here in this case we are using the value of organic loading as maximum permissible organic loading that is given in our question as our first, first trial so uh, we are assuming uh, the maximum organic loading that is taken place in this oxidation pond so we will uh, check uh, later on whether uh, this uh, maximum permissible loading is satisfied uh, with the uh, design and dimensions of our oxidation pond or not so here we have the surface area of the uh, oxidation pond can be determined by using formula surface area as equals to uh, w is your applied bod uh, divided by your uh, organic loading here we are using uh, organic loading value as maximum permissible organic loading so w is in this case here is 60 and organic uh, loading is maximum uh, per permissible organic loading as 500 kg per hectare per day so uh, solving this we will get the value of surface area of this oxidation pond uh, is 0.12 hectares that is equivalent to 12 sorry 1200 square meters now in step 5 we need to determine the effective depth of the pond so for determining the effective depth of the pond all we need to uh, uh, is to just simply use the formula as volume b equals to surface area times the effective depth so rearranging this equation we will get the effective depth d equals to volume by surface area so uh, substituting the value of volume and surface area we will get the value of effective depth as 1.67 meter so this value should not be greater than 1.5 meter so we are adopting in this case the value of effective depth of the pond d as 1.5 meter so here we are adopting the maximum value of the um, effective depth that is 1.5 meter so after uh, adopting this effective depth as 1.5 meter the uh, surface area of the pond should be revived as well so the revived uh, surface area of the pond is given as surface area of the pond as equals to volume v by effective depth d so when uh, substituting the value of volume v as 2000 uh, cubic meter and the value of effective depth as 1.5 uh, meter we will get the surface area of this effect uh, sorry oxidation pond as 1333.33 square meters in step 6 we will check the value of organic loading so the 
organic loading can be checked using formula u equals to applied bod divided by the surface area here the applied bod is given as 60 kg per hectare sorry 60 kg per day and the value of surface area we have just got recently is uh, revived surface area is 0.133 hectares so uh, dividing and this w with this surface area we will get the value of organic loading as u equals to 451.12 kg per hectare per day this value is less than the permissible value of organic loading as 500 kg per hectare per day so this is our so our uh, surface area is okay so our assumption is okay till now in step 7 we will assume the length to breadth ratio of the oxidation bond as well as the shape of the oxidation bond here we are assuming the length to breadth ratio of the oxidation bond assuming it as rectangle to be 2.5 that should be uh, ranging between 2 to 3 so the surface area of the bond can be determined by using the formula surface area equals to length time breadth of the oxidation bond and substituting the value of uh, surface area uh, as 1333.33 square meter equals to length the value of length in this case is 2.5 b uh, times the value of b so uh, solving this we will get uh, the breadth of the oxidation bond as 23 meter and and putting L equals to 2.5 times B, we will get the value of length of the oxidation bond as 57.5 meters. Now, in step 8, we need to provide the freeboard of the oxidation bond. Here, we are providing the freeboard of 0.3 meters, as the value of freeboard should be ranging between 0.2 to 0.5 meters. Likewise, we need to determine the overall depth of the bond. So, so the overall depth of the bond can be determined by uh, simply adding the value of freeboard just provided and the effective depth of the bond here we have provided the value of freeboard as 0.3 and adding this value of freeboard with the effective depth of the bond as 1.5 we will get the overall depth of the bond as 1.8 meters finally we need to provide an oxidation bond of length L equals to 57.5 meters with breadth B equals to 23 meters and the overall depth of the oxidation bond D as 1.8 meters. So guys, if you think this video is useful, you can like and share to your friends. And for such videos, you can subscribe to this channel as well. Thank you and we will meet in another video soon.